Something I've been needing to do, and a comment from a viewer kind of spurred me to make time to do this, but we're going to be fixing, replacing, repairing a chain brake on a steel ground saw. If you have even a new-ish model, they're all going to be incredibly similar. So this is my 270. It'll probably be very similar to what you have. You don't have to take the plastic off, but I just painted this thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, take the bar and chain off as well, blow it out, and we'll get started from there. Got the bar and chain side cover off. Went ahead and cleaned it out with the uh, air gun. First thing I'm gonna do, take out this Torx head right here, to free up this side of the handle itself. And mine's actually broke, so it came right off, but yours, if it isn't broke, will still stay in there connected on this side. You can see that's actually where mine broke. Next up, we're going to take off this side plate right here. Just a Torx here and a Torx here. Yours may have three. Been easier if I had taken that shield off, but didn't really feel like it. So, there's the side cover. I'm going to go ahead and blow this out back in a minute. All right, here we can see that there's my broken piece right here, the actual handle. In addition, the brake band actually came off of here. But all this does is pop up and back and moves this brake band in and out, which squeezes the clutch drum. It's as simple a mechanism as it is, really not uh, too much to it. First thing we're going to do, though, is take this spring off here, runs down hooks into here. That's what gives you your tension. It can be quite a bear to put back on. Take Ha! Huh? Yeah, like I said, it can be quite a bear. All right, getting it back on is usually a bit tougher. Next up, we have this C-clip right here. Go ahead and take that off. That can shoot across the room, so kind of put a hand or something in front of it to prevent it from flying too far. That one was pretty easy. There's that C-clip I just mentioned and took off. Your brake band will likely be connected, so usually take some needle nose and pop that off. But this assembly, including the handle, comes off as one piece. So you just kind of grab it and wiggle it loose. Slide, uh, find it easiest to slide a little bit off of this post and then a little bit off of this post and just kind of work it its way back and forth. Kind of hard to do while trying to keep the camera view clear as well. Alright, so there it is. And once it's off, they'll actually slide apart. This piece here is actually set inside that groove. So it goes in like that. Make sure to remember which way this is oriented. You can accidentally put it together backwards like that, and it won't be till you're ready to hook the brake band up or spring that you'll even find out that it's wrong. So on this one, goes like this. Just remember on yours. Actually, this spring I just noticed is disconnected. That's actually not on most models, but I already got it apart, so let's go ahead and hook that up. All right, so I'm ready. I can go ahead and grab my new brake handle. I'll go ahead and put this piece back in. And we'll reinstall this on the machine. When you're at this step, you need to make sure that those holes are lined up. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do this and not completely block the camera with my head at the same time. That side on. Kind of work it, wiggle it. Get your lined up. All right, there we go. See the motion there. Now before I go ahead and connect that band up, I'm gonna go ahead and put that C-clip back in. All right, so now that's holding that whole assembly in. Take a pair of needle nose, usually kind of pull and bend at the same time. Get that guy back on track. All right, all we gotta do now is put that spring back in. It'll give it all that tension. 
and we'll be good to go. The way I like to do this is I like to separate that first coil, give it a little bit of clearance. Just like that. And I can get my screwdriver out of there. I've got a good grip like this. So we'll take, we'll hook it on the top assembly, and then got to use a little bit of muscle. But pull it down right around that post. And kind of pull our needles out. There you go. That's all there is to it. I can go ahead and put that side cover back on and she's good to go. As I said, I probably should have taken that side plate off, but it isn't really necessary. When doing steps like this, look at the Torx heads that you're going to be putting into the machine. This was one of the last machines made where it had the magnesium body, even though it's not a pro level saw. These threads are fine, they're machine threads, that means I'm going into magnesium. But if they're coarse, like uh, a new 291 or 271, say the newer model of this, the coarse threads are going into plastic, so don't put it in with like a, a cordless drill. Do it by hand because you can rip those threads out really easily. All right, we'll put this side back in on the rewind cover. That's it. Fuck. Apparently when I reconnected my band, I put too much bend in it and it popped back off. Kind of bent it back against itself. Sure that's seated. All right, so don't put as much bend in there as I did the first time. Let's try this again. Motherfucker.